Let's talk about promises in JavaScript. There are two sides to promises. One is making promises and the other is using promise. And they are two distinct operations. Making promises is something we really rarely do in JavaScript, but it's good to know how to make them. And you might see them sometime on an interview question or some exam somewhere. Using promises is something we do all the time in JavaScript, and it's really good to understand how that works. To make a promise or to create a promise, we use the new operator, and we use new promise with a capital P. Now let's try that in some code. I'm going to go const promise equals new promise. And then we'll console log what we got. Let's console log what our promise variable contains. I want to run this node main.js and we get an error. It's saying the resolver undefined is not the function. What this is saying is we didn't provide our promise constructor with a function. So when you create a promise, it needs to know what to do. In other words, we didn't tell the promise what it was supposed to do. The promise needs a parameter, and that parameter needs to be a function. And that says to the promise, here's what you do. So we need to give our promise a function. Let's create a function. We'll call it do stuff. And it'll just console log. Doing stuff. So there's our function, and we'll pass that function to our promise, and then we'll try and run our promise. And now we get, of course, doing stuff, and we get a promise that is still pending. So it looks like the promise did our stuff, but the promise is still in the state of pending. Now promises can have several states states of a promise. They can be pending. They can be resolved. And they can be rejected. So let's take a look at these states. Now, pending means the promise is still doing stuff. It doesn't know that it's finished. A resolved promise means the promise is finished doing its stuff and everything was good. And a rejected promise means the promise is finished doing what it could, but for some reason it couldn't accomplish the task. So those are the three states of a promise. So what that means is in my code, I need to be able to tell the promise that it has completed, either resolved or rejected. And the way that works is the callback that we pass to the promise has two parameters, resolve and reject. And these are also functions, these are callback functions. And we can call these functions. For instance, if I want to tell the promise that it's finished, I would simply say resolve. And I don't even need any parameters. And now when I run my main.js, there, the promise is resolved. It says undefined. What that means is my resolve didn't return anything. So for example, if I resolved with some random number, I'll just say five and I run it again. It says I resolved with five. Now, sometimes we care about the return value. Sometimes we don't. Um, in this case, I don't really care. I just want to know that my promise is finished. So I simply run it doing stuff and the promise is resolved with the value of undefined. And that's really all there is to creating a promise. You create your new promise, you give it a function to do stuff. You then, in that function, you do some stuff and then you call resolve or you might call reject. And we'll talk about that a bit later. So now let's work on a typical question that you might see on an exam or in an interview. And the question is, create a promise 
that waits five seconds and then resolves with five. So let's do this. So we're going to create a new promise, like it says. So we've already done that. New promise. And then it says the promise has to do stuff. And what it is going to do, it is going to wait five seconds. So I will simply add a set timeout for 5,000 milliseconds. And then it says after the five seconds, it will resolve with the value five. And I'm going to add in my set timeout. When it's finished, I'll just say times up, times up. So let's test our promise to see if it is working. We'll go to our terminal, we'll run our program, and it, there's our doing stuff, there's our promise pending, and after five seconds, it does in fact print times up. So it looks like it is working. But how would I know that my promise is resolving with five? And that's where we start talking about how to use a promise. And to use a promise, we use the then method. In other words, promise dot then. And then is a method on the promise object that we can call, and it also takes a callback. Right. And the then callback is what will run when the promise is finished. I will use console log. I will say done exclamation mark. So when our promise is finished, it will now print done. And let's test this. We're going to promise again, doing stuff after five seconds, and then we get time's up, and then we get done. So now we're able to detect when our promise is finished. But what about the five? I want to get that value out of my promise. So the then function, we get a parameter. Oftentimes we'll call it result or we'll see it called res, and we can use that. So let's just console log done, and let's console log the result that we got back. We'll run that again, and after five seconds, we're gonna get times up, and we're gonna get done, and we get our value five. And this is how we get information out of a promise. So we've created a promise, and now we're using a promise. Promise.then, we get a result and we can use that result inside the then. So let's expand on this question just slightly. And I'm going to change our question to say create a function that returns a promise that waves five seconds and then resolves to five. So all we're doing is simply wrapping our code in a function. I'll call it my function. And I'll take my promise and my do stuff and I'll put that inside my function. And I have my promise here and the stuff the promise is doing is right here. So it does say my function has to return a promise. So I'm going to say return promise. And now my function returns a promise. So now I need to test my function. Now before I called promise.then, but now promise is inside this function. In other words, my function returns a promise. So I would call my function, and that would be my promise. Const promise equals my function, and then I'd go promise.then. And let's give that a try. Call my code, and sure enough, I get doing stuff. After five seconds, I get times up, and I get my five. So now I can call my function. We normally wouldn't see it done this way with a separate variable in the function. What we normally see instead is this. We see calling the function, generally the dot then on a separate line tabbed in uh, like this. So this is what you would normally see for calling a function. Your function dot then and then whatever you want to do when the promise resolves. And let's see what this looks like on our terminal. So we'll call our program again, and we should get the exact same result. So after five seconds, time's up, and we get our uh, result of five.
So this is how we use promises. It's usually a function that returns a promise, followed by a dot then, and then inside the dot then's callback, we do whatever we want to do when that promise resolves. And this is very, very common in JavaScript. Some function dot then, and then we uh, use the result of that promise. Let's add another feature to our function. We'll say, instead of waiting five seconds, we're going to say, wait a specified seconds, and then resolves with a five. So now we're going to say seconds here as a parameter to our function, and then we'll give our seconds times 1,000. Now, of course, now my function takes a parameter of seconds, so I have to give it some value. I'll just say two seconds. Let's test my, uh, my function. After two seconds now, I should get times up, and it still resolves with five. Now, when making promises, you may see it done this way with the, the do stuff function as a separate named function, but commonly, we take this function here and we just put it in line as a callback. In other words, we would take this function there and instead you'd see it done this way instead with your new promise and then the callback inside. But honestly, it really doesn't matter. You can either do it this way or do it this way with the name function. Whichever way you find most easiest to learn how promises work, they really are equivalent. Let's make another small change to our function and we'll say instead of resolving to five, we'll say resolves with a value. And that value will be a parameter to our function. And now we're going to resolve with that value. Of course, now my function takes two parameters, two, and I'll give it some value. I'll just say 10. So my function will wait two seconds and resolve with 10 on my function. So one, two, and it does in fact resolve with 10. So there we have it. Promises are actually quite simple. Creating promises are a little trickier. We have to uh, create this function that does something. We pass that to um, the promise when we create it. And the do stuff function has to either resolve or reject. Um, so making promises is slightly harder, but we don't do them that often. But using promises is much, much easier. We simply call the function that returns the promise, and it is dot then. It's a very simple pattern, and we use it over and over again, and it makes coding very easy uh, using asynchronous in JavaScript.